News 25 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, winners are announced for the annual Prump Taco Fest, and thousands of pounds of marijuana is seized here in Nye County. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local coverage you can count on. Taco Cooks vie for the title of Pahrump's Best Taco. It's Monday, October 15th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, thousands of samples were served and thousands attended the annual Taco Fest here in the Calvada Eye. The weather was perfect, the tacos were tasty, and money was raised for a great cause. The second annual Pahrump Taco Fest was held this weekend in the Calvada Eye. Thousands attended the second annual event. In fact, over 7,000 taco tastings were handed out by the 13 competitive cooks. Attendees became judges in the People's Choice category. For every 10 tickets bought for just $5, they got a new ballot to vote for their favorite taco here in our town. Also was the Judges' Choice Awards. We have to thank our five judges, Judge Robert Lane, Willie Bear, Josh Osborne, Darby O'Donnell, and Ryan Muccio. Being a judge was no easy task. In fact, these judges had 13 different tacos that they had to taste and rank in first, second, and third place. Selling tickets and keeping score was volunteers from the Seroptimist Club who were the beneficiaries of this event. Also, a large donation was made to Sleep in Heavenly Peace, which helps kids get beds here in our community. The Seroptimist Club focuses on on women in their careers and education and provide scholarships. 14 vendors surrounded the Cook's area. On stage was the Desert Shadows Band, who volunteered their time for this event. Also performing was the Lady of the Valley Catholic Church Dancing Group and the Golden Glams. This event raised thousands of dollars for our chosen nonprofits, which change every year. This year's Pahrump Taco Fest 2019 winners are, in People's Choice, number one, Alice Cummings. Number two, La Pina Loca for the Nevada Outreach and Training Program. Program, and number three, the Pahrump Senior Center. In Judge's Choice, the Kiwanis Club, number two was Fast Eddie's Street Tacos, and number three was Wendy Stanfill for the 5th Judicial District Court. The Pahrump Taco Fest would like to thank all of our sponsors, vendors, cooks, judges, and of course all of the people who stepped forward to help out behind the scenes. Next year's Pahrump Taco Fest promises to be bigger and better. For more information, go to the Pahrump Taco Fest Facebook page. <laughs> Thanks once again to everybody who participated. Well, a domestic dispute leads to an arrest of a local man. Patrol members be advised. Alan Fine has been arrested for domestic battery, false imprisonment, child abuse or neglect, interrupting or delaying a message to report a crime. According to the declaration of arrest on September 11th, deputies were dispatched to an apartment on Bourbon Street for a possible domestic dispute in progress. The reporting party was a neighbor who said that they heard yelling and screaming inside a nearby apartment. They said that they knew the relationship between the two individuals had been physical at times. Deputies attempted to make contact with the residents inside the home who did not respond. They say after some time, a male eventually came to the door and said that him and his wife were sleeping upstairs. At that time, the male, identified as Alan Fine, was allegedly very defensive and stated that he was going to contact his attorney and also began recording police on his cell phone. Officers say that they asked where his wife was located and they say he told them that she was asleep upstairs. The female eventually came downstairs and began speaking with officers 
officers, at first reporting that she was sleeping and later got emotional, according to police, and said that her husband and her did get into a physical domestic dispute. Police report that there was a contusion on the female's forehead and on her leg. They say that she reported that her husband did that to her today because she did not want to have sex with him. They also say that the female was crying and thanked officers for responding. At that time, Alan Fine was taken into custody and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. Officers say that they made contact with a 10-year-old female who was the daughter of the two subjects. Police say during an interview that the 10-year-old said that her father was throwing lit cigarettes onto a pile of clothes in the bedroom and that she would run over and pour water on them trying to prevent a fire from starting. They also say that they also say that Fine took her cell phone preventing her from calling 911 for help. They also say at one point the 10-year-old daughter reported that she got in between the two in order to separate Alan from being physical with her mother. The child reported that her father threw water on her, told her to shut up, and then got on top of her, kicked her multiple times, causing the child injuries. And more news on the other side of this break. This segment of the news is brought to you by... Pahrump Cardiology, located at 1397 South Loop Road in Pahrump, Nevada. Call 775-210-8333 for an appointment. Dr. Tali Eric, proudly serving Pahrump since 2005. This portion of the news is also brought to you by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every bloomin' thing. Welcome back. Well, a Beatty couple has been arrested after police say they were in a physical domestic. James Powers and Jennifer King have been arrested in connection with a domestic dispute. According to the Nye County Sheriff's Office declaration of arrest, deputies were dispatched to a home in Beatty for a welfare check. Upon arrival, they made contact with a female identified as Jennifer King, who police say admitted that she was in a domestic dispute with her boyfriend, James Powers, the night before. Officers say that King admitted that James had choked her and also showed the marks that were around her neck. King reportedly told police that she did not want to report the incident because she did not want to get Powers in trouble. During further investigation, police say that King stated James grabbed the back of her backpack that she was wearing at one point during a verbal altercation. He allegedly threw her to the ground, got on top of her, and began strangling her. She said that she could not breathe and thought she was going to die. She was also complaining that she had a hard time breathing and swallowing. A witness stated that they saw King with blood coming from her mouth. During further investigation, police say that King denied that there was any physical altercation between the two individuals. She also allegedly told officers that they did not understand love and that James would never really hurt her. Officers made contact with James Powers, who denied any physical altercation. In fact, he said that they had a verbal altercation at one point, but his memory was foggy because he was wasted that night. Officers say that they also continued the investigation with Jennifer, who had bruising around her neck at this point. She said that she wrecked her quad and hit her neck on the handlebars at this point, and then said that the injuries were from falling out of her vehicle and wrecking her quad. Officers ask about her arriving at two different people's houses, bloody, in which she denied that allegation. Law enforcement reports that King continued to be uncooperative with the investigation, in fact stating that she was under the influence and that they could not question her at this point. Officers then warned King about obstructing the investigation and then placed her into custody to transport her to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. While en route to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center, officers report that Jennifer King made several threats towards law enforcement, stating that she knows where they live, that she hopes that she doesn't see them in plain clothes, and that her ex-husband lives behind them and would inform her when the officers leave their house. Jennifer King was arrested for intimidating a public officer and false statement to obstruct an investigation. Investigation, James Powers was arrested for domestic battery by strangulation. Well, our local sheriff's department says that local and federal authorities cracked down on a marijuana operation hidden in the hills.
The Nye County Sheriff's Office reports that on September 14th of this year, they collaborated with the U.S. Forest Service and several other agencies working together to eradicate a large outdoor marijuana grow located in northeastern Nye County in Irwin Canyon. The Sheriff's Office reports that 5,742 plants were located unattended by workers who they say appeared to have recently left the area. The Sheriff's Office says that each plant equates to about one pound of finished product, which would correlate to about 6,000 pounds or $15 million in value. Police say that major drug cartels typically run this type of operation. They also report that these grows cause serious environmental impacts. A large amount of chemicals and dangerous pesticides were found on site. They also report that the trees surrounding the grow were topped off to allow in sunlight to the plants. Nye County says once topped off in this manner, the trees have no chance of survival. If you have any information about this marijuana grow, you can call the Knight County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000. You can remain anonymous. Well, the price of travel is going up during the holidays. Angela tells us about that in today's financial news. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Tapping our news today, a warning is out to expect to pay more for airfare during the holidays. Analysts mostly blame the grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX. That troubled jet has been removed from flight plans at United, Southwest and American until January. On an up note, discounter Spirit Airlines lifted its earnings forecast, sending shares soaring. Investors are reacting to changes at the top of Walmart and SAP. At Walmart, John Ferner will become the new president and CEO of Walmart US. At SAP, Bill McDermott is stepping down after nine years. Jennifer Morgan and Christian Klein will become co-CEOs. And Wendy's stock is hot. Shares are up 32% for the year. The fast food chain sales numbers are impressing investors. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks so much, Angela. Well, Quilt Wizard released a report that says the Nevada has some of the highest daytime DUI-related death rates. The report shows that the Silver State had a total of 37 impaired driving fatalities during the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. from 2013 through 2017. In 2017, Nevada had 12 drunk driving fatalities, up from just four fatalities in 2013. Nevada ranks at 13% and nationally, the rate of fatal car crashes involving drunk drivers was at 10.83%. And there were 3,901 fatal drunk driving car crashes in the four-year period. Alaska, Connecticut, and New Mexico are the top states, with New Jersey, Michigan, and Indiana lowest on their list. We'll be right back with more news after this. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Well, the Nye County School District says that Mrs. Karen Hawley, who is the coordinator of the federal and state programs, has been elected to serve as a representative for the state of Nevada on the National Association of Federal Ed Education Program Administrators Board of Directors. They say the board has a rich history of advocating for federal education programs in support of America's youth and provides support for America's educators working hard to maximize the return on investment of federal dollars allocated for education. The local GOP held a fundraising dinner Saturday night at the Nevada Treasure RV Resort. Tonight we had the Reagan dinner and we had probably oh, had over 100 people that showed up. Oh, um, wonderful dinner and our raffle. We had over 35 raffle items donated by the community. Um, we've had uh, numerous people purchase tickets and it turned out to be a very well attended event. Joe asked me to step in because the other individual had to resign for whatever purpose reasons and I stepped in and two weeks later we've done all this you know so 102 people have shown up and you know it's a well attended event so I'm looking forward to doing more. It's a fundraiser for the Republican Committee and uh, you know any donations whether it be monetary or volunteer is more than welcome. We are located at the end of um, Highway 160 as you're going out towards Vegas and we're next to the three-story bank right there so every third Saturday of the month we have a meeting so 
come on in and join us and we'll have a great time. Tonight we have uh, Sharon Worley is here speaking. Uh, we have Trevor Loudon, who is a um, author and a uh, blogger. I'm looking forward to hearing from him. Michael McDonald is here. The Republican Party believes in you. I know for a fact you I believe in that. So I ask you, come back stronger than you ever have. Because it will take everything we have going right forward to fight back the lies that were put out against this president. Uh, we have the CD4 candidates and the Congressional District uh, 37. So uh, Joe is going to run for the uh, chairman position, and then David Hebert's going to run for the secretary position. And then um, Kay LaPointe will stay as vice chair, and we have a few other people that are joining the committee. The next election is all about getting people to register to vote. You know, we need people to come out and be participant or active within the um, votes, we can't lose this vote. You know, we have to do what we can to get those people to the polls. So uh, we'll do numerous um, fundraisers from here out, and it's just going to be a day by day on our next event will be in uh, March, and it will be the Lincoln Dinner. So, uh, we can buy tickets now for that or no? No, we won't do that now. Uh, March is the date. So January 1st will be when I start doing the event. I'll be hitting up the local vendors again, and you know, asking for donations and people to help and all that fun stuff again. They can either come by the GOP office on 160, or they can call 775-225-3995 uh, and just give me a call and I'll hook you up. Well, the Southern Nevada Health District says pregnant women have a higher risk of being hospitalized if they get influenza, and in some cases, that could lead to death. Pregnant women are more likely to get complications from the flu, so it's important that they get a vaccine while they're expecting. Officials say only 54% of women surveyed who were pregnant last year got the flu vaccine. The report also says that maternal vaccination reduces the chance of their newborn being hospitalized from influenza by 72 percent. The antibodies from the vaccine are passed down to the fetus, and this will protect developing and newborn babies as infants can't get the vaccine until they are six months old. Well, today we're showing you a beautiful dog named Angel. Angel is lovable and actually hugs you when you hold her. I'm down here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today I'm joined with Angel. Angel is a one-year-old pit bull mix. She's super adorable and very friendly. She was just fixed and she is just a love bug. You should come see Angel or any of her other friends down here at Desert Haven Animal Society. They're on Siri Lane right behind the Knight County Courthouse off Basin Avenue. You can give them a call 775-751-7020. You can look them up on Facebook at Desert Haven Animal Society or on the web at deserthavenas.org. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. You have no idea how much Darby and Josh want that puppy. I bet you Baldo does too. Anyways, let's take a look outside on that Lerner and Row weather cam. Beautiful skies getting dark a little earlier now, of course. We'll have more with weather from the desk after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real.
right, our surrounding area is Las Vegas, high 81, low tonight, 55, Death Valley, 92, 59, Amargosa, 81, 47, Beatty's high, 78, 41 tonight, Goldfield, 67, 31, getting chilly up there, Tonopah, 65, 32, Carson City's high, 72, 33 tonight, Fallon, 71, 30, and Fernley, 71, 35. Sunny here today in Pahrump with your high of 80, winds out of the west-southwest at 5 miles per hour with humidity at 11% and sunrise 650. And uh, we're going to have a low of 49 tonight with the winds out of the east-northeast at 6, humidity 19% and sunset getting early at 609. The seven-day forecast shows us in the 80s, just going up a little bit on Wednesday to 86, low of 62. And then Thursday coming down to 83, 52. Friday coming down even more, 78, 51 with clear skies throughout the weekend. Sunday, 69, 44 is your low. And Monday back up to 71, 47. We're probably saying goodbye to those higher temperatures right now. And so that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. See you back here tomorrow.